Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Kerry and today I'm excited because I'm going to be playing with the Made by Mitchell colour cases. I've had my eye on these for a little while and I've picked them up because they're finally on Beauty Bay. They are £25 each, so I'm going to try and use them for as much as I possibly can today. So if that's of interest to you, please do stick around and subscribe. So the outer packaging for these two cases look like this. We do have a coloured one. Does it actually say the name on the packaging of these? So I can't actually find the name on the packaging. So I'm trying to look on Beauty Bay and it, the colour case cosmetic paint palette, the colourful one is called the Electrics and the neutral toned one is called the Essentials. So like I say, this is the outer packaging, this is for the essentials and this is for the electric and it says on the back, welcome to the world of colour cases. This product is my dream product and is the epitome of Made by Mitchell. Universal, versatile, multi-use and ultra pigmented. The essentials are your one-stop shop to your base, blend and depth. This is a game-changing experience that you won't be able to blend without. Now that's quite a claim and it just says on the back, these are cosmetic paints and I'm a little bit nervous, I'm not gonna lie, because I'm gonna try and use it for as much as possible, including foundation and concealer, and I don't know how well that's gonna go. Um, but from what I can gather, they are quite thick matte paints when they are dried down, so I'm thinking I'm gonna need a very hydrating base. I have already moisturized, but I am gonna go in as well with my NYX Mas Marshmallow Primer, just to make absolutely sure any dryness on my skin is gone because I do suffer slightly with a little bit of dry skin from time to time so I don't want it to be clinging to any of those patches. So I'm going to go in with this and we're going to go in with the essentials case. Now they come like this when you open the box and it does come with like a little spatulary thing on one side and a brush on the other which I appreciate because you're kind of going to need that to get the product out. Now if this really can do everything, £25, I don't think that that's a bad price but that's what we're here to test today. So this is what the spatula slash brush looks like. Just opening up the plastic. I'm not gonna do swatches of these because I think it's pretty pointless because you can see the colors that are in the pans. And I will show you when I've finally got all of this wrapping off, but I did end up giving in when I could see them on the Beauty Bay shop because I don't order from Made by Mitchell. Their customer service is shocking and I would constantly avoid that at all possible costs. So the packaging does feel quite nice. Um, I do like the colouring. I like anything chartreuse yellowy, green coloured. So let's take the lid off. And this is what the colourful one looks like inside. Absolutely gorgeous. I'm gonna try and use this as much as possible. Obviously, we're gonna pick a nice blush shade from this. Something for the lip. Don't know if you can actually put these in your waterline or not, but I mean, it says they're used for everything. I... And this is the Essentials, which should be amazing to do a base with. It just depends on the consistency. Now, they do have names on the back. Um, you do seem to get quite a lot of product in each of the little individual pots. Okay, so I guess I'm just gonna go in with my marshmallow primer in the hope any sort of dryness will be toned down. I am super nervous for this. Like, I can't tell you. I don't think this is gonna end up looking good and I have to go out later, so I might just be taking all of this off if it's not good. Now, I do have just a cheap little Amazon mixing palette here, so I don't have to do it on my hand. I'm hoping that might come in quite handy and I do have the little dips for the different colours. Very Bob Ross. So of course I'm going to be starting out with the essentials because I'm going to be doing my base first and I'm thinking like you get a nice variety of shades in this and if it works well I mean this could be amazing. I'm just going to have to work out which colours I want to mix together. That is the thing because I'm going to need some bronzer slash contour. I'm going to need some concealer and looking at them it does look like most of them are on the more neutral side, apart from this one here, which is called, what is this called? Dusty. Dusty looks a little bit more pink leaning. Um, these two tones look more neutrally. This is quite a nice light shade. Yeah, this is kind of a light, light pink type of shade. Mm, which am I gonna mix? Which am I gonna mix? So I'm thinking for sort of bronzer, the closest that I would probably pick is Caramel, which is this one here, but it might be a little bit too dark. So I might have to mix it with a little bit of, what is this one called? Unordinary or oats. So 
So I'm just taking the little spatula that comes with it, taking a little bit of the product, don't know how much I'm gonna need. And I'm actually just gonna pop it onto my palette and put it in one of the little holes so I know which color is which and then I can just mix as I need to. Okay, so I've got three of the shades in here, the three that I told you I was gonna be kind of mixing or using. So I'm just gonna try and make a little concoction in the middle and see what we can come up with. Okay, so I've more or less mixed all three of those shades together. I don't know if I've made enough, we're gonna see, but. So I'm just gonna take that shade, just go in with my brush and just pop it where I would. Is that a good shade? Have I done it too warm? Is that a bit too warm? It'll all be fine, Kerry. It'll all be fine. Hopefully this is quite blendable. Yeah, I've made that real warm. Um, I'm not sure how I'm feeling about this right now and I don't know if I've used too much. It does feel like quite a thick consistency, but it seems to be blending. I just feel like I'm turning myself slowly orange at this point. Um, abort. Let's abort. <laughs> hmm. Okay, okay. I'm thinking for concealer, maybe, what is this called? Creamsicle could be good. I am scared. Maybe this is a little bit light creamsicle. Now I'm actually, that is very light. Now I've actually got it on my face. Um, this is a learning curve for sure. Maybe I should mix something a little bit deeper with this. That's a little bit better. Um, hopefully it's not gonna make me look super dry and old on the under eye, but we'll see. I did say I was gonna test it for absolutely everything. That is looking, I've just looked in the viewfinder and I look crazy, don't I? Wow. Um, <laughs> yeah, let me take a bit of a deeper shade. That looks horrific on my under eyes, I would just like to say. Horrific, I need a sponge in my life right now. Um, that looks so bad. I'm very particular with my concealers because I like something light consistency and thin because I do have a lot of lines on my under eyes and that is looking rough. I'm just gonna keep painting my face at this point until the whole thing's filled in and then hopefully I can try and rescue it somehow. Gonna try a little bit of contour just to cool things down <laughs> a touch, hopefully. And then just trying to go in with some sort of foundation shade. I'm using the shade Oats for foundation. And hopefully I can rectify <laughs> the mess that is going on on my face right now. To be honest though, it's applying nicely and it looks like, apart from being applied badly by me. It looks quite nice apart from my under eye so far, the way that it's sitting on my skin. But hopefully this oats shade can save me and we can actually blend in all of the craziness I have going on. I think with this product, it's just literally a learning curve, like for the shades that you wanna use and mix together for whereabouts you wanna apply on your face, what works best. But this is why I just wanted to go in and do it, see what happens, see what works best for me. Let me try and blend this out a bit better, sticking to certain patches. I've made more of a cool tone bronzer shade that I feel like <laughs> will suit me a little bit better. So let me try and sort this. That is looking a little bit better now. I'm not as crazy <laughs> looking as I was before, but it's gonna be interesting to see how this all dries down and whether I'm gonna to need to powder because I do not like a sticky face, but I'm feeling a little bit better now. I think it first threw me off because the bronzer shade I made was far too warm, but now I've mixed it with a cooler tone shade. It looks a little bit better. Still needs some work. Look, this is my first go, stop judging me. <laughs> and the foundation shade and the way that that's sitting everywhere, everywhere it looks really nice on my skin apart from my under eye. Um, but yeah, everywhere else it's actually sitting quite nicely. Just go over everything with a sponge and make sure it looks somewhat natural looking. <laughs> Look, I know, I know, okay, it's not gonna be natural looking, is it? But that's definitely a lot nicer than I thought it was gonna be. 
Okay, moving on to the brightly coloured one, you know we're going to be putting on some blush and it's probably going to be an orangey shade. So I'm going to mix the orange with something because that looks kind of bright and scary right now. Maybe I'll mix, the, the orange is called Sunnyside. Maybe I'll mix Sunnyside with a little bit of this one, which is called Coral Moral. Okay, so I've mixed those two shades together and I'm quite pleased with the outcome. So I'm going to go in with this. It's going to be pigmented, isn't it? So I need to just maybe tap off my brush a little bit once I've loaded it up and then we'll just apply. Okay, yeah, it's going to be pigmented. I'm trying to go in with little bits and a light hand. But I do like that you can mix these as long as you're sort of sticking to colour theory and you kind of know what you're doing a little bit then you'll be able to mix them to whatever kind of shade suits you best. But I love an orangey, yellowy type of blush. That's just something I really enjoy. So I knew I was going to be using that orange shade definitely for blush. That is super pretty. Maybe I'll add the tiniest little bit of pink and the pink is called Hushed and it is this one here. We are going blush heavy, it seems. Um, I have no control anymore. That has turned into a nice corally shade. I will blend it out. It won't be as crazy as this. I'll definitely go over it with my sponge, but it's nice that you can change up your blushes and it is quite versatile in that way. Let's, we might as well go over the nose at this point and the chin. I mean, this, this <clears throat> is turning down a little. Just going over a little bit with that foundation shade just around the edges to tone this down before I go in with a beauty blender. At the moment, it still feels a little sticky. I'm not sure if it's going to dry down or not, but I'm going to use a little bit of setting spray. I'm going to use my e.l.f. Stay All Night Microfine Setting Mist, and then we're going to see what happens and see if it dries down. While we see what happens and see if it dries down, I am just going to go in and do some brows, which I'm a little bit scared about because I love my NYX brow pen felt tip thing. Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not looking forward to this part. Okay, so I've made a shade I'm happy with and I'm just gonna fill in my brows as best I can at this point. I feel like I'm a very strange color right now. But again, I don't think that's the product's fault. I think that's just me needing to learn exactly what shades I need for bronzer, for blush, what sort of thing I need to be doing. But this is working really nicely in the brows and it's filling them in. I mean, I do really like to draw in my own hair-like strokes and I'm not going to be able to do that the same with this product. But if he was replacing a brow pomade, I'd say pretty darn good. There is obviously as well, trying this for the first time, a little bit of product wastage because I don't know exactly how much I'm going to be needing for each thing. So I have noticed I have used quite a lot compared to probably what I actually needed, but that's just a learning curve thing. Okay, let's see how we're feeling right now. Oh, okay. It's still the tiniest, tiniest, tiniest bit tacky, but actually that's dried down quite nicely. Okay, now it's time for eyes and I do use eye bases and paints such as the P. Louise ones, even the ones that Mitchell did with P. Louise. I usually quite like them. So I'm going to use these in the same way, blend them out, but I do realise they're probably going to need to be set because I have creases and hoods and it's not always the best if you're not going to set it fully. So I'm definitely going to be setting it with some eyeshadow, but let's dive into these lovely colours and stick them on my eyes. Okay, so I just put some of the colours onto this mixing palette here. I've got the deep green, the white, the chartreuse yellowy green shade and the other bright green. Of course I was going to be using the greens, so I'm just going to start applying these like I would in the eyeshadow placement, blend them together, then I'm going to have to go in and set them. So maybe I should grab a green palette. Okay, so I've just grabbed the Beauty Bay Bright 2.0 palette because it's got a nice chartreuse in this and... That, that's that's literally the reason. Okay, so first I think I'm going to start out with the medium -y green, which is called High Viz. And I'm just going to put that on the middle part of the eye and just kind of treat it like I would eyeshadow, to be honest. I haven't put a base down underneath this. I mean, you can do, but I feel like to me, I don't like to do that. It feels pointless to me because this is supposed to be the actual base. Um, I may have took this side a little bit too high. 
let's just try and blend because you can blend on the edges of these especially when you've just placed them down and you can just blend them and treat them like a powder shadow then I'll go into the lighter of the greens and just pop that toward the inner area of the eye and then into the deeper green for the wow that's pigmented okay uh less product Kerry less product I'm just doing this quite messily to be honest just kind of blending them together look at that the way that they're blending and creating different greens in between don't worry we'll all be sorted out she says when I put the actual powder shadow on the top look at that the vibrancy oh this is what I was hoping for then I'm going to go into a little bit of that white just for the inner corner and of course I will run some of these paints on the lower lash line and cover up yeah my eyes still look a little bit crepey underneath from where I use the concealer I don't think I'll be doing that again on my under eye but looking at my base I can't believe how nicely it's sitting on, on my face now I feel like if you was to use these as liner let me just grab a clean fluffy brush just to go over the edges if you was to use this as liner it probably would set down and be absolutely beautiful but because I have put this in my crease I don't actually want it to crease so that is why I'm going to be going in with some eyeshadow but if you're not putting it into the folds of your eye if you're putting it somewhere else then I feel like it would be absolutely fine and just dry down perfectly well on its own without anything being added on top and they have all blended together beautifully. The pigment is vibrant. I am feeling this look. Literally just treating it like eyeshadow. And I'm having no issues. So the shades in here, I am going to be using a little bit of the shade Playground, which is this green here. Maybe a little bit of what matches the outer corner best. Maybe a little bit of jungle, maybe a little bit of this deeper green that is out here. Um, we do have a white in here as well so I can go over that. Just going to set it, not going to do anything extravagant, you've more or less seen the shadow placement so let me stick these on and then it will be time to try and work out whether I'm going to dare to put one of these in my waterline and to do a lip. And it just makes the eyeshadow that you're popping on top, it just pops, it's that much more vibrant, pigmented and intense. Like I'm super impressed with this eye look, I love green eyeshadow with a passion and it is it looks really good now it's all set to be honest you could leave it all matte you could add a shimmer would I add a shimmer to this am I gonna leave it matte I feel like I'm gonna leave it matte I'm a little bit scared because I don't know if you're supposed to use this for your waterline but we're gonna give it a go take him on for the team using the lightest greeny chartreuse shade which is called sour um let's hope this works hopefully it's just like the P Louise paints because I use those in my waterline all the time and I'm absolutely fine so I'm just using it in exactly the same way and painting it onto the waterline I'm not sure about that color though maybe I should go into the brighter green that is called high viz it's behaving in the same way as the P Louise paints do on my waterline so I've survived this is good now it's time for lip and I'm thinking I want to make my own sort of nude slash orange lip so I'm going to add a little bit of the orange which is called sunny side and maybe some of the light shades of nude like the unordinary and maybe a little bit of caramel so that one's caramel and unordinary is the bottom one down here okay so I mix the caramel shade and the orange and this is the shade that I've come up with let me just stick on a lip liner and then we can apply so to apply it, I'm going to use the Mitchell brush that comes with it. And... Oh, it's quite yellowy. Well, yes, Kerry, you added orange into it. What are we thinking to this shade? I feel like if you missed out on the Marigold lipstick by KVD, I think it is, you could literally make your own shade of it because this is giving me those vibes. Okay, that was easy to apply. We're gonna see how it is on the lips. It does feel a little bit drying straight off the bat, but let me just add a slightly darker lip liner because I feel like my lips are floating right now without a darker lip liner on. Okay, what we're we thinking to that lip. Um, 
that is how much product I've got left. I definitely need to be using a lot less product in the future. Okay, this is how we're looking right now. I think my skin is looking so flipping good. Like I like a soft matte foundation anyway, even though I've got dry skin, I do like a soft matte. I do like a matte looking face. I need to add some highlight. I need to add some lashes and mascara. So I'll definitely jump off and do that and come back and show you. But right now, I mean, I'm not as keen on my brows as I normally would be because like I said, I do use the NYX pen and it is so flipping good. I don't really tend to reach for brow pomades, but if that's your thing, this does work really, really well. Um, as I say, for the concealer, it's, it's not the worst thing I've ever used under my eyes, but I much prefer an actual concealer that's a little bit thinner of a consistency. But base wise, I am so blown away. Like I wasn't expecting this. I was expecting to hate it if I put it all over my face but it's not settling into lines as of yet. It looks nice and matte. It just, it looks beautiful. I am so pleasantly surprised with these products. Like, I thought I was taking one for the team, trying these. Um, I'd had my eye on them. Like I say, when they came into Beauty Bay, I'm like, yes. Finally, not that they've got good customer service. I'd just like to point out Beauty Bay has also got shocking customer service. But out of the two, I'd rather go with Beauty Bay than made by Mitchell. Um, when I saw that both of these were on there for £25 each, I'm like, wow. I have really wanted something like this in my life for quite a while. Something that you can mix yourself, something that's a little bit custom, something that's got a good formula that I could do literally a whole face with. And I feel like I have done that today. And actually, okay, my patrons will tell you. I was asking them last night, I'm like, do you really think I should use it as concealer and foundation as well? Or do you think I should just use it as bronzer and stick to things like those, like do it all? I'm like, okay. Pray for me, send help. Um, but actually, the way that it's turned out, I, I can't actually believe it. Like, this foundation is sitting on my skin so nicely. And I've tried a lot of new foundations recently. Like, of course, some pores are exaggerated because that's what all foundations do to my skin. I do have lines, I have got dry skin, but using that hydrating primer underneath, I think, really made a difference. So if you are dry skinned, definitely use a hydrating primer. Don't bang your elbow on your desk. Um, but I do think it is looking so good actually. I I'm quite happy to go out of the house later like this, which I was a bit concerned about having to wash it all off. But I am so impressed, especially how pigmented and beautiful it was when I was trying to put on the greens for the eyeshadow. So nice. Of course, I did have in my mind that I was going to set them with eyeshadow because putting them in my crease, I'm just asking for trouble if I'm not setting them. But the foundation and all the base dried down quite nicely. I have added a little bit of highlight, but I haven't powdered. All I did was use some of that setting spray. And I'm really pleased how this has come together. Like you can do a full face with these products. Like you don't even really need the colorful one. If you're gonna do a neutral eye and a neutral lip, you only need this one. If you are a color lover, maybe you'd be more tempted to get this. It depends what you're gonna be using it for. If you want it more for your base, I'd get this one. If you want bright technical color that you can mix together to make custom lip colors, lots of funky eye colors, and for your waterline, I would choose this one. If you want both like me and you're crazy, I would recommend both. If you've been thinking about it, I would say these are quite good products. I do think there is a learning curve to them though. A big learning curve. So for example, the next time I'm gonna use the essentials, I'm gonna make sure I pick the cooler tones, the deeper cooler tones to mix in with one of the lighter tones just to keep it cooler on a whole. I don't want it to be too warm. I've found out that I made too much of a warm shade to begin with today. So like I say, learning curve, I'm definitely gonna do it a little bit different next time. I'm definitely gonna use a little bit less product because I mean, for what you're getting here, I think 25 pounds is actually quite a good price on Beauty Bay, but I don't wanna to use too much product and waste it. Nobody wants to be wasting the product that they've paid for. So I'm gonna be using a lot less. Less is more with this, definitely. I like the fact that you've got a black and a white. You can really mix whatever custom shade you want with this. And I'd say the formula is really good, just not so much on an aging under eye. It's a little bit thick for that, but everywhere else it's looking super nice. You can make your own contour, your own bronzer. 
I actually really like this product. And that was the one I was the most worried about because I'm like, if I don't like this for my base, what else am I gonna be using it for? Um, I was a little bit more confident purchasing this one because I thought, oh, I'm gonna put it in my waterline. I'm gonna be able to use it underneath eyeshadows, but actually using it as blush and using it as a lip. Let, let's let's reevaluate the lip situation right now. It is on the drier side and it has dried down, but it's just like a matte liquid lipstick would be. And it doesn't feel awful on the lips. It does actually feel quite comfortable. And my waterline is still a limey green colour. So it is lasting in there, but I have only had this in my waterline for a little time. I don't know if it would last all day like the P. Louise paints do on me. I just will have to wait and see for that. But I like the variety of colours. You can just do so much with both. I think they are versatile. I think Mitchell has actually pulled it out of the bag with these. I am really impressed. I honestly did not think I was going to be this impressed with these products. I do think to do a whole face like I've done today to test it all out. It is a lot of mixing, there's a lot of mess, there's a lot of wasted product, it takes a lot of time. So I don't think you'd be doing it on the daily, but if you just wanna make up, oh, I've put some fake tan on, I haven't got the right bronzer shade, make your own. Or oh, I haven't got the perfect lip color to match this. You can make your own. But like I say, doing a full face like this every day, time consuming um, and quite messy, but I just can't believe how versatile these are and how good they are. I like everything really from the packaging of these. They feel like a nice plasticky sort of soft matte feel. Um, I do think you get quite a bit of product. Like it's fairly thick and I like the shades chosen in both. I think they are exactly what Mitchell says. They are versatile but can be used for anything. Obviously not like making you a coffee. That's, that's you know, cosmetically. So guys, I am going to be so interested to know what you think to these products, this look. Are you interested in trying these? Have you picked them up? Have you found a totally different experience to me? Do you hate them? Please do let me know. I need to know more about these. I don't see a lot of people talking about them. Maybe it's just the circles that I'm in, but I want to have more information about what people think that have used these or are thinking about picking them up. Please do let me know if there's anything else you would like me to do with these palettes and I definitely will. You'll probably notice the beginning part of this video, I wasn't super duper chatty and that is because I was scared and I was thinking I was gonna have a horrible makeup day and I am so glad that that has not been the case. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. I will have all my socials linked down below as well as my Patreon group and my YouTube membership. And I think that's about it guys. So thank you for sticking with me to the end and hopefully I'll see you in my next one. Bye.